Hello and welcome to Jaguar Classic and our celebration of a very special anniversary because this month sees the diamond anniversary of one of the jewels in Jaguar's crown. Yes, it's the 60th birthday of arguably one of the most beautiful cars ever built, the Jaguar E-Type. So in the show, we are going to be exploring some of the really interesting stories behind the original car, plus looking at Jaguar's exciting plans to mark the moment. We're going to be hearing from Jaguar Land Rover CEO, Thierry Bellore, plus Jaguar's design director, Julian Thompson, on just what makes the E-Type so special. Plus, we want to hear from you and your E-Type stories. Well, joining me in our special anniversary studio to look back at the history of the E-Type and look forward to this month's celebration is the director of Jaguar Classic, Dan Pink. Dan, thank you so much for hosting us here today. Let's just start with the role of Jaguar Classic and your role in preserving Jaguar's history. Now, well, our mission is a straightforward one. It's to preserve and restore our heritage for future generations to enjoy. And there's four ways in which we do that. First, this amazing Classic Works facility which we're in today. It's over 14,000 square metres, which is the largest of its kind in the world. And it's home to some of the finest restoration and servicing by Jaguar experts and specialists. We have 54 workshop bays, which service all manner of Jaguars, from XJ8s to D-types. We restore E-types back to reborn factory specification, and also build new D-types and C-type continuation cars from scratch. These vehicles are created to the highest standards of quality and authenticity, you know, which ensures that it keeps our rich past and heritage of the Jaguar brand alive. We provide genuine Jaguar parts to thousands of customers worldwide, which help them care best for their vehicles. We're also really lucky to house a collection of over several hundred classic vehicles. And finally, we've got our Works Legend program, which essentially enables customers the chance to buy the most exceptional classic Jaguars that are on the market. Wow, so it's quite a busy place then. I guess E-Type has always played a big part. Absolutely. You know, such a special anniversary is really important to us because the E-Type story is just so important to Jaguar's heritage. When it was launched in 1961, Jaguar's E-Type caused a sensation. So let's start at the very beginning then. Uh, tell me how it all started. The E-Type's development actually began in the 50s as Sir William Lyons looked to replace the XK sports car. Now Jaguar had dominated the racetrack, the C-Type and the D-Type, and it was lessons learned from these cars that would inform the E-Type, you know, as well as giving it its name. So what's actually deemed to be the first car, the first E-Type? The first prototype, E1A, was built in 1957, but the E-Type really took off with E2A, which was the second development car. Now this was a great example of Jaguar developing its cars in competition. As part of the testing of the car, Jaguar actually entered the vehicle into Le Mans. But this all predates the launch of the road-going E-Type, which we know and love today. And that's quite a story in itself, isn't it? Yeah. The E-Type was first presented to the world at the Parc des Vives in Geneva on the 15th of March 1961, which was just ahead of the motor show itself. But the story of its debut is really the story of how it got there. Just two cars had been taken to Geneva, a motor show stand car and a demonstrator the fixed head coupe registered 9600 HP, which was famously driven overnight from Coventry to Geneva by public relations man Bob Berry. Now in those days, the show started with demonstration drives for the media. Now Bob arrived with just a few minutes to spare before its official unveiling. The 9600 HP is the car that you see today with photographs of Sir William Lyons. But such was the demand from the media to drive this car that Sir William Lyons decided it needed a second car for demonstration drives, the convertible 77RW. Now the problem was, at the time the car was in Coventry, it's a legendary test driver, Norman Dewis, he was told to drop everything and drive it from the factory to Geneva, again, overnight. Now this was totally worth it. Jaguar took its first 500 orders even before they left Geneva. And that was just the start of the success story. You have to remember, Amanda, that when the E-Type launched, it was faster than a Ferrari or Aston Martin, but half the price. And Jaguar was really smart enough to take it to America just a month after Geneva, which literally turbocharged demand. 
around two thirds of the E-types built in the world, 72,000 between 1961 and 1974 were sold in the US. In the US, the E-type was known as a Jaguar XKE. Now the Jaguar, as many people know, is really an icon of the British 60s. And in 1996, the E-type became only the third car to join the Museum of Modern Art's design collection. But we're not just talking about sales success, are we? Because the E-Type was also phenomenally successful on the racetrack. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, right from the very start. It was only a month after its launch that the E-Type won its first race. Now this was at Alton Park in Cheshire and the driver was a young chap called Graham Hill. Now the car wasn't designed specifically to race, but it was fast, well-balanced and had disc brakes and an independent rear suspension. As well as UK production car racing, Jaguar also used the E-Type in endurance competitions, including Le Mans, Sebring, and the Nürburgring. This led to the creation of the lightweight E-Type. Now, as most of our viewers will know, only 12 of these lightweights were ever built in the early 60s out of a planned run of 18 cars. So in 2015, we had the opportunity to bring the remaining six to life using the original chassis numbers. Well, the E-Type has never been far from the hearts and minds of Jaguar's design team. And in preparation for this celebration, we caught up with Jaguar's design director, Julian Thompson, on what the E-Type means to him. I guess my, my first memories of uh, Jaguar E-Type were, were, in, were in the 60s when I was probably uh, 89 years old. And suddenly my neighbour, out of nowhere, bought this, this, this brand coupe which was a, was a stunning machine and I was just totally transfixed with it. And just once or twice, you know, he, he took me to school in it. And, you know, that was like nothing else, you know. I guess the first time I actually drove one would have been in my early 20s. One of my colleagues actually had a, a beautiful red Series 1 convertible, which he let me drive. And I was amazed how modern it felt and how together for a... For a car of that era. It was, it, was a, it was a fantastic thing. When you're a designer working for Jaguar, it's fantastic to be, you know, to be a part of Jaguar and be so proud to be part of that history. But it's also very intimidating to try and follow cars like the E-Type Jaguar. And, you know, it is a true icon, you know, in that it really set out a totally different agenda, really moved the needle on what was actually possible. E-Type's very, very beautiful cars, very, very elegant, but the racing ones, you know, I think just have that little bit of edge to them, you know, that are a little bit more brutal, a little bit more attitude, a little bit more aggressive. They sit that little bit better on the road. They sound a little bit noisier and a little bit more menacing. And so probably the, the, uh, the low drag E-Type, the race car is really the one which does it for me that, you know, it's just got that little bit of edge, a little bit more purposeless to it, which I find very, very exciting. They're all fantastic, obviously, but the low drag car is the one I really like the character of the most. Well, there's clearly a lot of love for the E-Type, um, but as well as the car itself, there are some big personalities involved as well, but unfortunately said goodbye to some of them. I mean, the E-Type story is also that of the people behind it. Of course, Sir William Lyons himself and designer Malcolm Sayer. But for anyone who works at Jaguar, three names in the E-Type story are legendary. Those we always think of when we think of the E-Type are Lofty England, Norman Dewis, and Bob Berry. Norman and Bob have been with us on several E-Type anniversaries, but both sadly passed away just before we reached the 60th anniversary. As a team, they were involved in not just launching of the E-Type, but fundamental to its development. Bob was a racer himself, and Norman was also a test driver. So there was genuine racing experience and passion amongst them. Lofty England was Jaguar's race team manager, and this car was one of his early prototype E-types. Now, Lofty recruited Bob to Jaguar in the 1950s when they met at Le Mans, and he became the firm's PR manager. Norman was central to the development of the disc brake, a key feature in the E-type. Lofty was with us until 1995, and Norman passed in 2019. Bob sadly passed on the 1st of January this year, and we owe them all a huge great debt for their roles in bringing the E-Type to the world. And there you have it. That's the official story of the E-Type and the people involved. But that's only part of it because of the 72,000 cars that were sold, we know each and every one has its own story. And this is where we'd like you to get involved. 
We want to hear your E-Type story, whether it's as an owner or a fan, and you can do so posting on social media channels using the hashtag E-Type Stories. Well, it's now time to bring our E-Type story bang up to date because it's not just in the past. Now you heard Dan tell us earlier about the role of Jaguar Classic and what they do in creating special collector editions. Well, for the diamond anniversary of the E-Type, they've gone one better. And to tell us a little bit more is Jaguar Land Rover's CEO, Thierry Bellore. The future will see Jaguar as an all electric brand leading the way in modern luxury by design. We are incredibly proud of Jaguar's deep heritage, as well as its strong and established brand equity to allow us to realize its unique potential. This month sees the Jaguar E-Type celebrate its diamond anniversary, securing its position as Jaguar's most enduring and unrivaled symbol. This striking, iconic vehicle inspires customers across the globe, having created generations of lifelong Jaguar enthusiasts. 60 years after its unveiling at the Geneva Motor Show in March 1961, the talented team at Jaguar Classic are releasing the ultimate birthday present to the E-Type, the E-Type 60 collection. Six matched pairs, in an exclusive anniversary specification inspired by the two famous launch vehicles. Such is the iconic appeal of the E-Type. I'm confident we will be celebrating it years to come. And here they are, the beautiful E-Type 60 collection matched pairs. Now they're all sold as pairs and there's only six in existence. And joining me to tell me more about them is the head of Jaguar Classics Engineering, Dave Foster. Dave, welcome to you and tell me more about these beautiful cars. Well, Amanda, this is one of six limited edition matched pairs. Every E-Type 60 edition will be built from the existing 1960s 3.8 litre, fully restored to this exclusive anniversary specification. The six 9600 HP inspired fixed head coupes are finished in unique flat out grey paintwork with smooth black leather interior. And then the six roadsters mirror 77RW with unique green paintwork and suede green leather interior. They also feature our commemorative E-Type 60 logo, which you'll see in the bonnet badge, the fuel cap, chassis plate and clock face, all designed in collaboration with Julian Thompson's team. In fact, the attention to detail demonstrates how this project has been a labour of love for our designers, engineers, craftspeople and partners. Exquisite detailing features everywhere. And what about the incredible engravings? Each has a custom designed engraved centre console by prominent artist and world leading engraver Johnny King Nerd Dow. It celebrates the epic road trips undertaken by Norman Dewis and Bob Berry to get to the 1961 launch. In the coupe, the engraving is stylized to route map of the route taken by Bob Berry with an overhead sketch of an E-type and the words, I thought you'd never get here. That was the reaction of Sir William Lyons to Bob's arrival just minutes before the unveiling. For the roadsters, the engraving tracks the route taken by Dewis on his last minute drive to Switzerland with a sketch of the car and another Lyons quote, this time, his instructions to Norman, drop everything and bring over the open top E-Type. And you haven't just considered how these cars looked, have you? Because these cars are actually ready to drive. Absolutely. Our customers tell us they really want to get out and enjoy their vehicles. So the E-Type 60 editions feature specially developed close ratio, five speed manual gearbox, an uprated cooling system, as well as subtle nods to modernity. These include the Jaguar Classic infotainment system, with satellite navigation and Bluetooth connectivity, a stainless steel exhaust system, electronic ignition, and a cooling upgrade with alloy radiator. So will I see one of these pairs at my local dealer? With only six pairs being created, they're obviously very rare. If you'd like to find out more about how to own one of these incredible E-Type 60 collection pairs, please contact our Jaguar Classic team directly. So what an incredible opportunity to own some fabulous cars, but that's not the only element for the lucky few. Let's go back to Dan to hear more. 
For owners of the E-Type 60 collection pairs, we are offering a once-in-a-lifetime E-Type pilgrimage from Coventry to Geneva in the summer of 2022 for them and their guests. Now, this incredible experience will be supported by Bremont, who are including a rally timer with each pair of vehicles, Todd's, who are providing driver-focused shoes and accessories, and Bennett Winch with coordinating luggage. We are also working with Glen Turret Whiskey, who will soon be launching a limited edition E-Type single malt. Meanwhile, Bremont have also created limited edition watches inspired by the E-Type 60 collection, utilizing the colors of these special vehicles. 120 will be made in total, with 60 pieces in green and 60 in gray. Now, whichever you choose comes with Bremont's first ever rally timer. Also, with each purchase comes a classic Jaguar driving experience at our own track with three of our E-Types. Well, thanks, Dan. Now, if, like me, you just don't have the garage space available for this incredible pair, then don't worry, because there is plenty of Diamond Anniversary merchandise available online or at your local Jaguar retailer. Now, let's bring the story full circle, because we're not just talking about E-Types. The spiritual successor of this car, the F-Type, has also joined the party, as I found out earlier. The other car marking this special anniversary is the F-Type Heritage 60 edition. Now, this car is the work of the SV Bespoke team. So I have come to their workshops where these cars are brought to life. And joining me is Claire Hansen. Now, you're the Director of Vehicle Personalisation. Before we talk about this incredible car, just tell me about the work of SV Bespoke. Yeah, of course. Well, SV Bespoke is exactly what you'd expect. Our team undertakes unique and special vehicles. We can create direct customer commissions, delivering completely unique specifications in our commissioning suite. This includes even matching a paint colour to anything a customer brings us. We also offer amazing limited edition vehicles. This F-Type Heritage 60 edition is actually our first ever SV Bespoke Global Limited Edition. So come on then, tell us more about the F-Type Heritage 60 Edition. How did you create this incredible car? Yeah, so we worked really, really closely with Jaguar Design in order to pay homage to the E-Type in a contemporary way. This is a fantastic example of what the SV Bespoke team is truly capable of. We've immersed ourselves in the heritage with unrivaled access to original drawings, paint codes and reference materials. Firstly, we chose to recreate the Sherwood green paint from the original E-Type palette, which Jaguar hasn't offered since the 1960s. We have a duo-tone leather interior trim, which isn't normally available on F-Type. And this is finished with beautiful details, such as a unique aluminium console finisher inspired by the E-Type's rear view mirror casing. To connect to the special E-Type 60 collection vehicles, we also have the E-Type anniversary logo embossed on the headrests of the lightweight performance seats. And just like the car it's named after, this car is also fast, isn't it? Yeah, really fast. The F-Type Heritage 60 edition is based on the new F-Type R coupe or convertible. So you get all-wheel drive and Jaguar's supercharged V8 engine, which gives 186 miles per hour top speed and 0 to 60 in just 3.5 seconds. Although you'll have to be fast to catch one because only 60 will be made and the order book literally filled within days. Well, it really is stunning. Thanks, Claire. Well, it's been fabulous to share this wonderful celebration of the iconic E-Type with you today and to tell you exactly what Jaguar are doing to mark this special diamond anniversary. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And if you want to find out any more about the gorgeous E-Type 60 collection match pairs, you can, of course, contact Jaguar Classic directly. And please don't forget, share your E-Type stories with us using the hashtag E-Type Stories. For all of my guests, thank you for joining me and to you for watching. Bye-bye.